Hello and welcome to Great Dalton. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new Hitachi Class 800 in N-Gage by Kato. Now this set has very much recently just been released. Um, I bought mine from Hattons for £178 which already just by the price sounds like incredibly good value considering it's a five car set and when you look at some other sets like the uh, Graham Farish 350s then the upcoming releases or the Voyagers you think that's very good value. So um, this isn't the uh, general region which I usually model, I'm usually more west coast mainline but there's some models that just look nice and you just want to have them for example I have a first great western 150 just because I like the class 150 so I thought I'd grab one of these because it did look, look a really nice model and from what I've seen off Facebook or other YouTube reviews it's definitely worth having so let's get straight into it and have a look at it um, so it's presented in this nice book set which is very similar in size to the Dapo book set which just makes storage that much easier if we slide out the sleeve it generally does look like a book and then we have this nice clip on the side for a bit of authentication and detail which is nice so if we unclip that and then we open it up we have the usual gump mostly in Japanese but it is multilingual a bit of bubble wrap for the extra protection and here is the set so what's nice about this set is we have some pieces of track here so if you don't want to run it or you haven't got a layout you can actually just use this um, and has it as a display piece so got some pieces of Kato track here which I think just click together as any standard N-Gage track does and then you have a nice display area with a bit of track on a shoulder of ballast if you wanted to display it so we've got three straight pieces and then we also have this uh, buffer end piece as well which is a nice little detail in here we have the hooks for coupling multiple units together um, and a little screwdriver, I'm not sure what that's for so let's take out one of the, uh, one of the units here we have the end car it's a very nicely printed livery on the side we've got all the etched details here we've got the roof details a poseable pantograph, it's not sprung which means for those of you who have catenary um, you can use it Um, have the under bogey details uh, this here will be the cover for the decoder and then we've got the nice all pickups and all bogies so there shouldn't be much interference with the lighting sprung Kato coupling at the end uh, what this allows is uh, close coupling around all radiuses of corners which is nice and then what we've got the nose at the end here which should just clip out and then in there we have our pin for our hook to connect multiple units together which is a nice feature that they've done here and that just clips back on I'll be at the right way round so let's take a look at the power car I'll break it So we've got a raised floor there to accommodate for the motor underneath. It's, uh, it's got a fair bit of weight to it, so shouldn't have any problems pulling the five, four, five coaches around all corners. Um, it was pointed out in another review that you could see all the way down the corridor, which is quite a nice feature. And then we've got the sprung cut pins again. Looks like all-wheel drive, which is handy. No traction tyres, but that's, uh, that's no problem here. We've got a fair bit of weight and all-wheel drive. So, uh, yeah, that looks nice. So let's have a quick look at this uh, multiple unit coupling. We'll just take the nose off, one unit, and then another one, and then we can install this hook onto the pin. Nicely clips on. Same with the other one. And there we have our multiple unit coupling. This would be great for running 10 car sets, as is very prototypical on the main line. Could be a little bit closer, but at least you've got that flexibility for tight corners in. So the decoders for these are a specialist decoder by Kato. They're not just the standard 6 pin or 8 pins. Um, under here you have a cover which lifts off, and you can see the lighting decoder which I've installed in there, which just slides in in the place 
of the um, plastic plate which is there when it's manufactured. Um, I've got a problem with these actually because the lights aren't quite working right. I'm not sure what I've done wrong so I'll have to look into that. But basically I've got headlight, uh, tail lights in both directions and then when I switch direction both lights go off. So I'm not sure what I've done wrong there. I'll have to see if there is a uh, forum for any discussion on issues like that. But uh, that's the uh, head and tail light decoder. You can get those from Hattons. I think they're about 17, 18 pound each. Same with the other car. And then the motor car, once I find it, take the body off, which is nice and easy. It just clips off like any other coach body. And then we have under here the underbody detail, which also clips off. Let's take out that reflector quickly. And then under here we have our motor and our flywheels. And then this decoder here, which essentially just slips in. You need to take the bogey off and the drive shaft, and then you can slip that decoder here. And it's held in by these springs. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so it's held nice and firmly in place. The drive shaft doesn't run on any of the uh, chips on the decoder, so there's no wear there. So let's put that back together. Now, interior lighting. I've used the um, Kato recommended interior lighting kits, which is this 11211. It essentially comes with uh, this little unit at the end, which uh, has two pickups onto these springs, which you have to install manually. And then it comes with a small LED, which then shines down this entire reflector, allowing the coach to have light. The good thing about it is, um, as it's only one LED, it's not overwhelmingly bright. Um, you find with some light bars, as they've got LEDs all the way down, it's very glary and it can actually uh, cause some issues when photographing or it's just unrealistically bright, as in the passengers would have to wear sunglasses. So the good thing about these is it's only one LED. It just reflects off all of these uh, small diamonds on the reflector and then allows a nice level of light. Um, we'll just have a look at that in the dark. So there is the coach. It's actually got the lighting on. It might be quite difficult to see. So I'll just turn off the light. And there it is. Now all of the interior lighting kits come with a small orange um, lens which you can pop in front of the LED to take away some of the blueness that the internal lighting actually gives. So I've done that because it did look rather blue when first installed. So getting it on the track is no issue at all and these Kato couplings just clip together a bit like the uh, functional couplings on the end of a Depot Class 153 and there we have it. So let's pop this train on the track now and then we can have a look at it. So there's the train on the track in its entirety, looks rather nice especially on the super elevated curve. So as I was saying with the lighting I have a bit of an issue at the minute, you see that these tail lights are on. And so are these ones. Now if I switch the direction on the controller, they just go off. And so do these. So that's going to take a bit of investigation. I hope I don't have a faulty unit. Uh, I followed the instructions on the decoder installation, pretty much word for word, although it's in Japanese, so I had to follow the pictures. But they're not working for some reason, so if anyone's got any suggestions in the comments, please uh, let me know. All right, let's have a bit of a test run then. So, other than the actual lighting issue we have, it's a very nice model and would definitely recommend any N gauges to buy. Um, it's been said before, um, but British manufacturers could definitely learn a lot from this model. And it's come derailed for some reason. But just the fact of the presentation and the uh, display track, it's, it's a very nice model. Um, so I'll leave you there, I'll just give you some running shots of it under the continuum and the super, super elevation and I will see you next time for another video. Bye bye.